<sighs> Greetings, fellow Whovians. Well, time for another Doctor episode review, and today we're going to be looking at the Daemons. Here we go. In the village of Devil's Head, an archaeological dig is excavating the infamous Devil's Hump, a Bronze Age burial mound. The, the dig is being covered by BBC Three. A local white witch, Olive Hawthorne, arrives to protest, warning of great evil and the coming of the Horned Beast, but she, dismissed it, but she is dismissed as a crank. Watching this, the doctor tells Joe that Miss Hawthorne is right, the dig must be stopped, and they go there. Miss Hawthorne goes to greet the new local vicar, Reverend Magister. Magister, actually the master, tries to assure her that her fears are unfounded, but his hypnosis fails to overcome her will. Backed by a group of followers, the master is conducting ceremonies at the cavern below the church to summon up a force of evil. The doctor and Joe reach the mound, and the doctor rushes inside to stop the dig, but it is too late. The tomb door opens, and icy gusts of wind rush out, and the, and the ground begins to shake, toppling the camera crew and even the, co the coven in the catacombs. The master laughs triumphantly and calls the entity's name, Azal, and the eyes of a gargoyle, Bok, flare with, with a reddish glow. Joe enters the mound to find Horner and the Doctor motionless, covered with frost. Back at unit, Captain Mike Gates and Sergeant Benton are watching the end of the broadcast as it went dead. In the morning, they arrive at the village it just, just as a heat wave engulfs the village. The Brigadier finds himself unable to enter the village, and there is an invisible dome-shaped barrier, ten miles of diameter and one mile high, surrounding it that causes anything trying to enter to heat up and burst into flame. The barrier is centered on the church. He contacts Yates and is briefed on the situation while the doctor and Joe return to the dig, where they find a small spaceship in the mound, which has been condensed. From this, the doctor realizes that the master is trying to conjure up an ancient and all-powerful demon who was seen on Earth to be the devil, but actually an alien. The doctor explains that the demons have influenced Earth throughout its history, becoming part of human myth, and see the planet as a giant experiment. The master has called up the demon the master has called the demon up once, and right now it is so small as to be it is so small as to be invisible. The third summoning, however, could signal the end of the experiment and the world. Dun 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 The master summons up Azel again and demands that he give him the power that that is his right. But Azel warns him that he is not the master's servant. Azel also senses the presence of another like the master, and wants to speak to the doctor to see if he is worthy to take over the world. Azel says on his third appearance, he will decide if Earth deserves to, c to continue existing. If so, he will give it to the Master. Azel then vanishes in another heat wave. The Doctor returns to the village. However, the Master's agents are at work, and he is soon captured by a mob of villagers and is tied up to a maypole, about to be burned alive. With the help of Miss Hawthorne and Benton, he escapes. Joe and Yates, meanwhile, ret have returned to the church have returned to the church cavern and watches as the master gathers his coven to summon Azel one last time. Joe tries to interrupt the ritual, but it is too late. With another rush of heat, Azel manifests himself and Joe and Yates are taken prisoner. As Joe is prepared as a sacrifice to Azel, the brigadier manages to get through the heat barrier and enter the village. The doctor manages to avoid Bach, who is guarding the church and gets into the cavern <coughs> when the master is expecting him. Outside, Unit troops are held back by Bach. The Doctor and the Master both try to appear to Azel, but for opposite reasons. The huge double-like figure decides to give his power to the Master, and fires electricity at the Doctor to kill him. However, Joe steps in front of the Doctor, asking Azel to kill her instead. This act of self-sacrifice does not make sense to Azel, and sends him into a, into a confused rage. The Doctor tells everyone to flee the church. With Bach rendered motionless, Azel erupts and the whole church is blown up. The master tries to escape but is captured by the unit troops and taken away. The Doctor Joe, Miss Hawthorne, and the unit team join their join the villagers in their May Day celebrations. So, yeah, it's actually pretty interesting plot if I do say so myself. So anyway, let's look at some production and continuity elements of the story. The demons began life as an audition scene for, for the companion of Joe Grant. The audition sequence went on to be written into episode four. Producer Barry Letts was keen to write for the show and decided that a story dealing with black magic would be interesting as well as frightening. Script editor Terrence Diggs had reservations, however, saying that many people view it as Satanist, and so it was reworked as strictly scientific with occultist themes. 
The master was originally intended to worship the demon in a church set, standing on an altar. However, owing to fears that this might upset religious viewers, the scenes were reset in a crypt. This was subsequently revised again, and the crypt is called a cavern, although the set clearly resembled a church crypt. Les initially intended to write the story himself, but found himself short of time due to producership duties. His wife suggested a friend of hers, Robert Sloman, who was a playwright and journalist. Together they worked on the script in the evening after work. At the time, however, the BBC frowned upon production staff writing for the series, and so Les and Sloman decided on the pseudonym Guy Leopold, Sloman's son and Les's middle name respectively. The, t the working title for the story was The Demons, which was commissioned on December 17, 1970. The scripts were completed by mid-February 1971 and worked on by Dix, who had barely completed work on them by the time the story went into pre-production in March. Director Christopher Berry had worked on Doctor Who before, but wasn't particularly keen to return as he preferred to concentrate on less genre-specific productions. However, he liked the script due to the rural setting and his interest in archaeology. He would go on to direct the show for a number of he would go on to direct for the show a number of times again, but still listed the demons as his favorite, saying, quote, it was a damn good script. Much of the series was filmed on location, was filmed on location in Aldeborn, Wilshire. The location shoot was awarded two weeks filming, more than double the usual amount of the time, leading to a lot of the finished story being set outside rather than in studio. Membury Airfield in Berkshire and Bridge Farm Ramsbury were also used briefly as locations. The film began on April 19, 1971, and saw pleasant, sunny weather for the first week, leading to sudden overnight snow in the second week, causing filming to be delayed. Some episode 1 scenes were filmed at night, a rarity for the show, although some of these scenes were filmed during daylight with a dark filter put over the camera lens. Other dark indoor scenes were filmed in a disused aircraft, at, at aircraft hangar at Bridge Farm, Ramsbury. Filming for the serial caused great excitement in Aldborn with a lot of the village residents appearing as extras, as well as the Hedonton Quarry Morris dancers performing a routine in episode 4. Nice! The cast included David Simeon, who was himself from Wilshire when the story was being filmed. He had previously appeared in the Inferno story a year previously. Comedy actress Damaris Heyman starred throughout the five episodes as Miss Hawthorne in, in a central role. Heyman herself had an interest in the supernatural and helped out during production as an unofficial advisor. A friend of hers was a practicing witch, who had commended the scripts for their accuracy. Writer and British actor Robert Wentworth played Professor Horner. Future television presenter and Sudi puppeteer Matthew Corbett had a brief role in the final episode as a hooded coven member who objects to the sacrifice of Joe Grant, and was suggested to the production team by friend Katie Manning. Other guest actors included Don Milkop as the pub landlord, John Joyce as Garvin, and Stephen Thorne as Azal. Thorne would go on to appear on the show again as costume villains in The Three Doctors and The Hand of Fear. Nice! After three days of studio taping, work on the serial was completed on May 16, 1971, less than a month before transmission of the final episode. The, this last episode contains footage of a model church being blown up. The scene was realistic enough to lead many viewers to believe that the BBC had actually blown up a church as part of the filming. The BBC received a number of letters complaining about this. Gee, I wonder why. The clip of the Brigadier's helicopter blowing up as it crashes into the heat shield is brought from the James Bond film From Russia with Love. Nice. The television channel on which the news program filmed at Devil's End Broadcast, BBC Three, was fictional at the time. BBC Three was created in 2003. The message was quotes that the Lima motto, Do what thou wilt shall be. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, as to do my will shall be the whole of the law. The incantation that the master uses in summoning Azal is actually the nursery rhyme Mary had a little lamb said backwards. What was Damaris Heyman's name said backwards? Huh, interesting. At one point, the doctor refers to the laws of aerodynamics, proving that bumblebees should be capable of flight, which is an urban myth. Yeah, it definitely is. So, a very unique and interesting story, and hey, I, the supernatural elements in this episode are actually pretty darn good. So, overall, I give the Demons four sonic screwdrivers out of five. Well, join me next week as the Dalek, as we see the return of the Daleks in 
day of the Daleks. Mwahaha. So until then, this is Hooping Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt, when I say run, run, I have a versatility of the neutron flow. Would you like a jelly baby? Fantastic. Alon Z Geronimo Bow ties are cool, fezzes are cool, and Stetsons are cool. <laughs>